Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Well, returning for Holy Week. We are inviting you to take a journey with us through the scriptures this Holy Week each morning as we look at key devotions at, as we lead up to Jesus' death on Good Friday. So turn in this morning to our first reading from Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Jesus a third time predicts his death and resurrection. Now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem and Jesus was going before them and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And then he took the twelve aside and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be delivered be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him and on the third day he will rise again. I would like us to draw back to the first verse this morning. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem and Jesus was going before them and they were amazed and as they followed, they were afraid. As disciples of Jesus, we have signed up, we have surrendered our lives as followers in his footsteps, to follow who he is, to follow in his ways. And as we do that, our foundation is this, that we worship him, we are in awe of him. And I, I see that this is so clear in this scripture. As they followed him, they were amazed. I have looked at different translations of the amazed. It, it, it means in awe. It has this sense of the fear of the Lord, in awe of who God is. And one translation said this, that it was a sense of dread, maybe um, awe and amazement, but slight hesitation might be the correct sense. And then we read, interestingly, that as they followed on this one occasion on this road, as they were amazed and they were afraid. And often our lives can feel like that as followers of Jesus, sometimes stepping into what he calls us to do or following in his footsteps uh, may leave us with nervousness, feelings of what, what is to come. We need to be clear about separating out that sense of fear of the Lord and awe and also just fear in our lives. Earlier uh, at the start of this year, Nick spoke very clearly to the church on fear. It was a word that God had given him that we must address fear. Fear is is paralyzing people. Fear causes us to think irrational things, to make unusual decisions. Ultimately, it cripples us. And uh, this can be all sorts of fears that are prevalent in society today. And we have deep emotions around fear. Uh, fear also intimidates us. As we look at the fears, and it is really important to look at fear and understand our emotions and the why and look at the roots, that's part of freedom, that we don't just deny the fear. But also, it is important that we keep our awe and our perspective on our God. If you're like me, uh, fear it grows out of proportion as our focus is on fear and not on Jesus. It's not a simple transaction in our lives to just exchange fear for faith, but it's very important that we recognize that as we follow him first, we follow in worship to Jesus, in awe of him. And then we will encounter fear along the way. But what follows in this passage is interesting, that as they were afraid, Jesus took the 12 aside and he shared with them the secret of what was to come. For me, ultimately, this is my greatest foundation to walking out a life of faith, to dealing with fear, is that ultimately, we are called to walk in friendship with the Father. It's the most incredible invitation to walk and follow alongside Jesus in this communion. And we know this to be true from the scriptures. Those that choose to follow him are given greater revelation as to what is happening in their lives and the world around them. 
I used to have a little sign in my house that I looked at regularly as I got up in the morning, and I'll leave you with this this morning. It said this, there's nothing that I won't go through today that we won't go through together. And there was an image of a child in a father's hand, holding hand to hand. And though we live in very shaky times, and though it is as if the nations shake at this time, you and I are in awe following Jesus on that road, walking behind him, drawn aside to hear his heart. We can set aside the time for this, even this week, that we understand the spiritual realm, we understand the secrets of heaven, and ultimately know, and this is so faith-raising and uh, freedom-giving, that there is nothing that we will not go through, uh, that we will go through, or nothing that will happen in our world that we won't go- have the ability to hold on to his hand and walk through with our heavenly father may this truth bless you at the start of this holy week